Welcome back to another trade video. And in this series, we break down the top 12 most recently traded players. Let's go ahead and kick right into it. Starting off with the most traded player, it is Devontae Adams. Now, he has 33 targets through these last three games with rookie Aiden O'Connell at quarterback and the new head coach, Antonio Pierce. Looking a little bit closely, these last two games, Adam, he has 26 total targets and has 13 receptions. I noted in last week's video, the downside with this connection is that catch percentage, you know, with O'Connell and Adams. However, that's not going to matter too much when he is heavily targeted. Looking a little bit into this connection, he has been targeted at least 13 times in four of Aiden O'Connell's starts. He also started week four as well. Obviously, if you could get Adams on your team, you should, you know, but this price tag is going to go up each week. He's coming up on his bye week after this week, and he's going to have a tougher week 16, week 17 championship matchups here, Kansas City and Indianapolis. You know, nevertheless, Adams, he's one of the best wide receivers, and you should always trust the talent. Get him on your team if you can. The second most traded player is Tony Pollard. Now, Pollard, he did find the end zone for the first time since week one, you know, last week here in week 11. He also had 17 opportunities, you know, targets and carries. While the rising Dottle, he had 10. Uh, he is, you know, dealing with an injury and he has missed some practice time this week. Going back to Pollard, it has been noted that, you know, he has had a slow start to the season. He has been inefficient all season, you know, at least leading up recently, which I guess kind of makes sense. Battling back from a fractured leg, you know, maybe learning a new offense as well. But like I said, let's look a little bit deeper over the last month. Pollard, he is fifth in avoided tackle rate. So also, I am not trying to kind of let these last two weeks against great matchups, you know, the Giants, the Panthers, sway anything here. He has had a good two-week outlook. And also moving forward, these next couple games are looking good, but starting in week 14 against Philadelphia, there is a tougher stretch Week 16 against Miami, week 17 against Detroit. These matchups will be crucial for the playoffs. I may look to sell Pollard and acquire a stable asset with a better playoff outlook. Now, if you are enjoying the content, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel. Moving on here to the third most traded player is Calvin Ridley. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, seriously, this series should just be called the Calvin Ridley Woes. I have noted every week Ridley is boom or bust. You know, I will spare you the Amari Cooper comparisons if you've been following this series. He is coming off this 100-yard game, which also happened in week one, week five, you know, and now week 11. That's three times. However, he has six games under 50 yards. He's boom or bust. If you want that, trade for him. If you do not want that, trade him away, you know, especially coming off this boom game. I want consistency and someone I can trust in my starting lineup. Moving on to the fourth most traded player is Cooper Cup. Now, we hate to see injuries happen, and Cup is dealing with an ankle injury. Head coach Sean McVay is saying Cup does have a chance to play this week, at least when this was recorded. We saw the Rams shut him down last year when they did not have a positive outlook on their season. I would like to believe if the Rams believe they have a chance to make the playoffs, then Cup will play. If they do not have a chance, which we will know over these next few weeks, you know, if they win or lose, maybe he's not going to play. So if you are risk averse, it may not benefit you to trade for Cup. If you want to take a home run swing, you may want to trade for Cup. You know, it seems simple as that. The Rams are four and six, currently third in their division, and they are on the Outside looking in for a wild card bid. Moving here to the fifth most traded player, it is James Cook. So following that odd, you know, kind of week 10 benching week, Cook, he comes away with 21 opportunities. I noted in last week's video, you know, there was a good buy window following that, you know, benching or whatever that fiasco was. So Buffalo, they do have a tough matchup here against Philadelphia as they're going to head into their buy the following week. So maybe there is an opportunity to trade for Cook. If your league mate, he they, they might be a fringe playoff team and they might need a running back who has a better matchup this week and will also play the following week. 
you know, these little nuances, they're important to look for when trading. It may boost that trade a little bit enough to happen. Regardless, get Cook on your team. Fournette, he has yet to be activated to the active roster. You know, there's talks he's come and acclimated. And until then, Cook, he's going to see his fair share of the work. And, you know, even with Fournette, without him, he may remain an important factor in the past game. PPR points always matter. Get Cook on your team. The sixth most traded player here now is Devontae Smith. Smith coming off a huge game where he led the Philadelphia in receiving, and A.J. Brown is also coming off a dud. Smith, his season, it started slow, but it seems they've been getting a little bit steam over these last few games. So if you can acquire him, absolutely go for it. It seems this offense is rolling, and we will continue to see Smith involved. This will be bringing back that 2022 season vibes, you know, as we head down the stretch here. At least, you know, I'm kind of a little optimistic about that. But I do need to note, and this is an important reminder, Dallas Godera, he did not play in week 11, and he has been not put on injured reserve yet, which would mean he's out at least four games. But back to Smith, he has averaged 5.3 receptions over these last three games, and he has two separate 99-yard games. This offense is clicking, and we're rolling, and we're kind of being a little reminiscent of last season. Go ahead and get Smith on your team. Now, the seventh most traded player is DK Metcalf. So, Metcalf, he also found himself in the end zone for the first time since week four. Now, he also has back-to-back -back games over 90 yards. This offense, maybe it's clicking. I noted a few times over the last handful amount of weeks that Metcalf is a buy, as he is a consistent weekly starter despite the lack of touchdowns. It is definitely going to be difficult to acquire Metcalf after these back-to-back, -back, you know, impressive weeks. This price will go up. So though this is, of course, an important reminder to buy low when you have the ability. But he still would be a worthwhile add to your rosters. Just be cautious when investing, as this last week was the first time he finished as a weekly wide receiver one on the season. Moving on to the eighth most traded player, Debo Samuel. Now, the 49ers, they're super happy Samuel is back for their offense. I noted last week to sell Samuel coming off that 15.9 point game back from his injury. That game was boosted by a rushing touchdown, which in the seven full games prior played, he only scored in three of those. Looking at his receiving stats only, he is only averaging 8.2 points per game since returning. This offense has a plethora of playmakers on the team, and they spread the ball around. You know, Ayuk and Kittle, they're kind of leading this receiving charge. Wide receivers. So if you can sell Samuel and find a consistent piece that you do not need to rely on with that rushing production, I would look to do that. The ninth most traded player is Puka Nakua. Now, the aforementioned cup injury, it's going to make it hard to acquire him, right? However, Puka, he is also dealing with a shoulder injury. He is labeled to be day-to-day. -day. Similar reasoning with Cup. This team is on the outside looking in for a playoff spot. Teams obviously want to get that. Puka, he has had a tremendous rookie season. I mean, a fifth-round rookie who is sixth in the NFL in targets and sixth in receiving yards. You know, he should continue to be a focal point of this Rams offense. And if Cup is limited in any fashion... There's no reason, Puka, he will not heavily be targeted like he was to start the season absent Cup. I mean, he still technically is heavily targeted as he has seen no less than seven targets per game. Go and get him on your team if you can. Kicking it here to the 10th most traded player, it is Travis Kelsey. Now, I figured the Chiefs, they would look to get right with their offense coming off their bye. And despite any lack of a big game from Kelsey, he did still have nine targets and had a touchdown. But we all know Kelsey, he's going to be heavily targeted. He is averaging nine targets per game after all. If you can acquire him, you absolutely should. No idea why you should sell. You know, he has the potential to get you top wide receiver production with that tight end designation. I do understand if you sell Kelsey to the league mate who may have lost Mark Andrews, but this will only make sense if you have a viable backup tight end. Like maybe you were lucky to get Trey McBride late in the draft or off waivers. There are always variables to make you trade away an asset like Kelsey, but you know, sometimes you may not align with those variables. Get Kelsey on your team, you know, or keep him if you have him. Moving on to the 11th most traded player, it is Jerome Ford. 
His fantasy day was saved last week with a touchdown as he only had 31 rushing yards on 12 carries. He did have five targets, which with this new rookie quarterback taking over for Watson, it may be appealing. This was a tough matchup against Pittsburgh, you know, as TJ Watt and Alex Highsmith were rushing the rookie quarterback. Going back to the touchdown, Ford stole the goal line touchdown. Cleveland was giving Hunt over these last five weeks. If we can guarantee Ford is getting these goal line carries moving forward, I would absolutely look to buy him and plug him into my lineups as we head into the playoffs. Now finishing with the 12th most traded player, it is Chris Olave. Olave has absolutely been rolling as of late. Five straight games with at least eight targets per game. Additionally, he has at least five receptions per game as well. Michael Thomas, he was placed on injured reserve. This means he will be out at least four games. It is absolutely wheels up for Alave to end the fantasy season here. If you can get him on your team, it's obvious. And this immediate outlook with Alave and the Saints, this con- continued success should happen. Simple and sweet here. Alave, he has also seen at least five targets in each game. The volume is going to be there moving forward, especially with Thomas, you know, on injured reserve. Finishing here with the 12th most traded player, it is Chris Olave. So Alave, they have been rolling as of late here, five straight games with at least eight targets per game. Additionally, he has at least five receptions per game as well. Michael Thomas, the other wide receiver for the Saints, was placed on injured reserve. He will be out at least four games. It is wheels up for Alave here to end the fantasy season. If you can get him on your team, this obvious immediate outlook will probably guarantee continued success here for fantasy. Simple and sweet here. Alave, he has also seen at least five targets in each game. The volume is there, and moving forward, the volume will continue. Go get him on your team here as we head into the fantasy playoffs. Thank you for watching today's video. If you did enjoy it, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more fantasy content.